Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to the Prague Chess Festival 2020. In this is ninth round, the last round. And in the um, last video, I show you the very dramatic game between Vidit Gujarati and David Navara. Vidit was winning and it was uh, pretty easy on the board to, to see how to win that game. But he pushed too much and then he lost the game. Um, very, very big loss. And Jan Krzysztof Duda in his interview uh, after the round said that it's, it's nearly impossible. It's very, very difficult to recover after such a loss. So um, I would like to show you the the game of the last round between Jan Krzysztof Duda, who said that word, and his 21 years old uh, player from Poland, very strong grandmaster, actually number one in this tournament by ranking. And his ranking is 2755 and he play as white. And his opponent is Vidit Gujarati. He play as black, he is 25 years old player from India and actual ranking 2721. So let's see if Vidit could actually recover after such a loss. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into the game. Duda open with d4. We have knight on f6, c4, e6, knight f3, and d5. Knight c3, so queen's gambit declined, and bishop on b4. So uh, Ragos in defense, queen a4 by Duda and knight c6. Knight c6 is actually the, um, the only move which, um, cov which blocks the check, but also um, defends the, the bishop. So it's impossible to play any other move. So we have knight on c6, e3 and castle by uh, Vidit. And in this position, it's possible to play a bishop on d2, just to not let black to, to mess up the pawn structure, or queen on c2, and queen on c2 was played by Duda. We have rook on e8, um, preparing e5 in the future, but also uh, giving the spot for the uh, dark square bishop. We have bishop on d2. Uh, and here a6 taking the, the the spot from white so white can't jump for example uh, with the knight and and Vidit if you if you remember from his game with uh, Sam Shankland he likes to jump over there we have a3 kicking the bishop and bishop usually moves to f8 or d6 in this case d6 and here Duda uh, told okay and maybe Vidit didn't recover yet so let's try something uh, very sharp and he castle on the queen side and this is pretty crazy because there are only two games in database at least in my database which both um, are lost by white so so black uh, start to stand better in this game as well we have bishop on d7 and c5 so closing the position here uh, with tempo on the bishop so bishop has to move bishop on f8 and now white has to decide what to do definitely white would like to uh, attack on the um, on the king side but for now it's impossible uh, so e4 first and now this is the threat e5 is the threat and after the the knight is moved but but actually there there is no space to move by knight so knight would have to move here and um, and this would be very very strong attack if the bishop also join uh, and maybe the rook even, that would be uh, very devastating. So d takes on e4 has to be played. We have knight on e4, knight on e4 and queen on e4. Uh, and here now black lost this defender. Knight on f6 is very important uh, because it covers uh, usually a lot and also defends h7. Uh, so it's important piece usually in the defensive plans. So black has to do something on the king side. So knight on e7 was played and here we have bishop on d3. And that's the first threat uh, checkmating on h7. We have g6, the strongest move, of course, and knight e5. So something definitely is going on. And here Vidit Gujarati probably should go for bishop on a4 with attack on the on the rook. And rook is, is quite good piece on the um, d file because it defends in the future d4, which, which is quite 
weak in, in this pawn structure. Uh, so white probably would just exchange the light square um, uh, bishops and after bishop on g7 position of black is, is pretty well and both players just can enjoy the game. Uh, but we have bishop on c6 so um, black of course don't care about the exchanging for this, this bishop for the, for the wonderful knight on e5 and black of course think that okay I'm going now uh, with tempo on the queen however queen can move to f4 and now we have a threat of attacking f7 and f7 is not defended now because rook is on e8 so that's the problem. Uh, knight on f5 was played, so now blocking this, mm, uh, this file, but now we have g4, so the knight should move, and knight can move uh, to h6, but it's pretty passive. Uh, better move is bishop on h6. So we have knight on c6, and here b takes on c6. Uh, of course, uh, bishop on f4 is impossible to play, because we have knight on d8, and after bishop on d2, yes, with tempo, but after king on d2, and rook takes on d8, then this knight is still hanging. So g takes on f5, and white are um, you know, up the minor piece, and of course winning the game. So uh, that was not possible, so b takes on c6, and now this is a weakness of um, Vidit Gujarati, but also it gives black the possibility actually to play on the semi-open b file. So uh, let's see what happened in the game. We have queen on e4, um, because of course queen still is under attack. And now bishop takes on d2, we check, rook takes on d2, and knight e7, because now knight is under attack, so knight on e7. We have bishop on c4, so moving um, the bishop to this very strong diagonal, and there are always some tactics uh, with these pawn structures, and the king on g g8, so uh, black has to be very careful here. Knight d5 solved that problem, and this is very, very good outpost for black knight. We have h4, so the attack continues, queen f6, so bringing the queen closer to the action. We have h5, and here e5, uh, so black want to open the position here and uh, play something, make, have some counterplay in the center. Uh, and here what white could play, maybe, would be h takes on g6, h takes on g6, and after rook on d3, try to, um, you know, double the rooks on the h file and attack, uh, but after e takes on d4, queen takes on d4, because queen is under attack, so queen on d4, uh, black would just exchange the queens, and everything would be fine for black. Uh, white stands slightly better because of this of these pawns, uh, but that would give some chances uh, for black. This is why Duda just wait. So uh, he made king on b1 the waiting move. Maybe not the greatest move, but it's also not so bad. The, the only problem is that there are some jumps in some cases uh, and uh, you know this knight can fork the king and the queen the only problem is that the rook should be first on the b file which in some lines is possible uh, but we have rook on uh, d8 uh, by vidit gujarati however if he play rook on b8 that would be more interesting now king would have to be moved because of this threat so king would have to be moved on e1 uh, and now e takes on d4 and queen takes on d4 and the position would be slightly better for white um, but black would have a lot of possibilities to play so for example queen on f3 comes to mind with attack on the on the rook and also there would be some possibilities of attacking the the king here because this 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 file is is semi open and also the the knight can jump uh, in some cases so 
uh, white would have to be careful but black didn't go for this line uh, instead the rook was played on d8 and that's quite passive move now uh, white's gonna get the initiative and now we have rook on e2 so now e takes on d4 is of course um, impossible because of checkmate on the last rank and after king on g7 we would have h6 checkmate so that's unplayable so knight on f4 with attack on the on the rook first rooks move on e3 and knight go back to d5 and still attacking the rook do the answer with uh, taking the pawn on g6 and now black has to decide what to do of course um, knight on e3 is impossible to take because of the bishop on f7 so um, uh, g takes on f7 with check king f8 and now picking up the rook uh, and then picking up the um, the knight so of course uh, white would be the um, uh, up the material uh, and it's minor piece up so of course easy win so that would be impossible and also queen on g6 which uh, seems to be the best move but actually it's in favor of white queen takes on g6 h takes on g6 and now rooks can be double on the um, uh, open h file so uh, king should move somewhere king f8 but still rook h8 king actually can move to g7 uh, can move back uh, and and white just can exchange the material and win the game rook e1 and black has to do something with the pawn so uh, push the pawn but then a bishop takes on a6 and of course it's winning with two extra pawns and one of these pawns are the the past pawn so white would have a quite comfortable win this is why uh, in this position Vidit Gujarati didn't take by the queen uh, he want to you know uh, keep the queen maybe with queens he can uh, create some some counterplay uh, so we have h takes on g6 rook e to h3 and then here we have king on f8 so uh it looks quite dangerous so uh, better to make some evacuation of the king and here in this position Duda was thinking what to do and th there are a lot of moves but he couldn't uh, you know find anything else and this move is not not liked by engine at all but he just pick up the the pawn on a6 it's nothing wrong with this move but it also um it, it shows also that uh, vd doesn't have any counterplay and can't do anything and actually if you look at this position what to play as black what to play as black of course e takes on d4 doesn't work because rook h8 with check and uh, and king can't move of course if the king move on g7 then we would have checkmate so that's impossible uh, so queen would have to um, be sacrificed and after rook on h8 of course um, is winning for white so that would not work definitely so what else uh, could be play maybe rook on b8 with the same threat at least uh, what would happen if the if the rook is moved to h8 actually white can play this move and after king on e7 rook to e8 with check king e8 now we have the threat correct so queen e5 with check and that's all that's all the black can do anything now queen e5 d, d goes on e5 and two extra pawns uh, of course winning the game so that also doesn't work uh, the engine actually recommends e6 but uh, but it, this this would also doesn't work white are just simply better here uh, and white even can win by fancy way by bishop on c8 attacking the the rook and if rooks go back then uh, white just just can exchange the material and win the game and if rook takes on c8 it also it's even worse because rook h8 with check king e7 and this rook actually can be um, taken so that's uh, all the options are actually better for white and um, black has nothing to do so at least vidit gujarati try to take the pawn on f2 and um, that's the problem now duda 
uh, feel free actually feel free to pause the video because Duda now uh, can do some very very nice tactic which uh, which actually is the strongest move in the game uh, so yeah just pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you found Rook on F3, then congratulations, you are as strong as Jan Krzysztof Duda, uh, the Grandmaster with 2755 ranking and number one ranked player in the Prague Chess Festival tournament. And uh, however, we are looking for much stronger move and the much stronger move is Rook on F1 and actually Black has not much choices. Black actually have to play some crazy stuff like, okay, uh, Black of course can pick up the, the rook, but uh, that will be sacrifice of the queen, of course, losing the game. Can try actually knight on c3 with check and attack on the, on the queen. So rook takes on c3, which it looks very, very weird. But now e captures on d4 with attack on the rook, but also a discover attack on the queen and now queen uh, can move on h1 uh, and this is uh, actually uh, black actually can cannot do anything um, so can just takes on f1 a queen f1 and d takes on c3 b takes on c3 and uh, white are actually up the up the material uh, minor piece up so of course um, that would be winning so that was the best uh, option for white uh, however, Duda played rook on f3 and, and it, it looks like it's the same strong, but it's uh, not. Uh, actually here, rook on b8 could be played by Vidit, but he didn't find. He, he just actually thought, okay, I just lost this game. I have nothing to do. But if he play queen on b8, um, it's, it's not a winning move, it's not drawing move, but this is the move which still gives him some chances to play. So, for example, now, uh, if rook takes on f2, then we would have this knight on c3, and now uh, that would be a fork. Actually, this fork could happen, and then after king on c2, uh, knight could take on e4, and white, of course, still stands better. Uh, but at least black has has some you know some chances and are still in the game. However, after rook on f3, v did play uh, queen takes on d4. So um, he just moved the, the queen and tried to exchange the queens. But Duda said, okay, I don't, I don't want to exchange the queens. Now I'm gonna checkmate you. So he played queen on g6. Uh, and what's the, what's the problem here? Now we have checkmate threat on f7. It's not easy to, uh, to defend. If the rooks go on e7 actually that uh, that would be checkmate in one move if another rooks moves uh, it's also uh, not really better because now we would have also rook on h8 and after king is moved then we would have queen takes on f7 and checkmate is in another move so um, that also doesn't work uh, so knight on f4 that was played by Vidit blocking the, the rook but now Duda play queen on f6 and now there is another um, checkmate threat and this checkmate actually uh, it's impossible to block it's impossible to avoid uh, by any, any way black play one more move queen e4 with check and attack on the rook but of course rook can't be taken uh, because of the checkmate on h8 uh, so do that just play uh, bishop on d3 blocking this this attack and in this position um, Vidit Gujarati resign the game and he resigned because he has nothing to do even the moves like queen on e1 doesn't work uh, because rook on e1 and after rook on d3 which uh, could be very sneaky but uh, rook f4 
uh, just winning the game. And E takes on F4, we would have the, the checkmate. Uh, and if black finds some way of, of avoiding this checkmate, then of course the material is enough to win by white. This is why in this position Vidit Gujarati resigned the game. And it's interesting um, situation in the tournament because after all rounds we have five players with, with five points and four out of five games were decisive in the last round. So totally opposite uh, to the Tata Steel tournament where all players just um, draw quickly and only Fabiano Caruana enjoy his very very long game and here totally opposite we have only one draw and this draw was very very dramatic and I gonna show you that in the, in the last game because this was also decisive uh, who gonna be the winner of this tournament both of the players could be the winners but both of the players uh, ended up in the first uh, place uh, so stay tuned and I'm gonna record one more game of this tournament and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike and leave the comment what would you like to see in the next videos after I finish this tournament I definitely gonna follow the uh, Akiba Rubinstein live and I'm gonna show more of his games as everything is uh, start to be very very interesting uh, so don't forget to subscribe you know click the bell button and uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one